Hello and welcome to the Natural Healers Network TV show where we showcase natural healers in the South Bay and we discuss natural healing and the benefits. And we have a great show lined up for you today. We, our first guest is Lori Krein. She's an expressive arts... Expressive arts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Help me, Lori. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> she has, well, let me say this. She has an art studio in Campbell, California, where she teaches expressive arts. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good way to put it. All right. Um, well, welcome, Lori. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Wonderful. So just let's start off by, can you explain what expressive arts means? Uh, I'll try because it's kind of this wide open field. Um, expressive arts uh, can be many different types of art that uh, sometimes it's used in therapy and sometimes it's just for fun or a hobby or whatever, but it's a way for people to express themselves in ways other than talking. So um, it could be drama, you know, doing role play, that kind of thing, or just theater, improv, that kind of thing. It can be dance. Um, uh, and then in, in my case, uh, it could be music as well. That's another way to do expressive arts. Um, drawing, painting. In my case, it's uh, using collage as the expressive arts medium. So um, it's a way for people to just kind of share or get, get to the emotions that they might not be able to get. You know, when they're doing talk therapy, a certain part of your brain is being used to talk and to explain how you're feeling. Uh, expressive arts is is a way to tap into another part of yourself and and you might be able to get out what you're feeling uh, to the world because and you just don't know what the words are you can't find the words to explain it but you're able to to express it in a piece of artwork or a piece of dance or a, um, an improv or a theater or music so that's what expressive arts is okay well you mentioned therapy I'm curious to know if you think this is considered art therapy Okay, so um, most people have heard about art therapy, and you, you know there are therapists who specialize in doing art therapy, and that's usually when you know you go in and um, the, the uh, therapist guides you through some exercises where you might do drawing or play with uh, toys in, in ch children's case sometimes, and that's very specific kind of therapy and they do analysis of sometimes if you do drawings like kids will do drawings and then they analyze what did the drawings mean you know they might draw the uh, parents very small and the children very big or there's different things that you analyze in the drawings and they mean something very specific that's art therapy and it's usually used when um, people are having deep issues and they're acting out and they need help so the difference um, between that and expressive arts therapy is, uh, or in the case what I do, it's not even therapy, but it is therapeutic. So there's a difference. So people come to my studio and they're just looking to express themselves. They want to learn how to do collage. They might do some painting. And so what happens in the process is kind of by accident. I call it accidental therapy because they are able to um, work through issues that, that uh, through the art without really doing it intentionally. So one of my first, um, this woman, woman came to my workshop uh, about three or four years ago when I first started and she had just lost her husband. He was like 35, he got killed in a motorcycle accident. And she came in just, you know, obviously going through grief and she just wanted to be around people and be in a creative environment. And she spent the next couple of months working on a couple pieces of art that ended up being um, a memory of her husband and, and it was like just so I could see her going through her grief process so mm. it was therapeutic she didn't talk about it very much she just did her thing and at the end of those couple of months she was a different person Wow what a yeah. beautiful experience for her it was and, and probably for you too to be it a part was of that. yeah and I didn't even know what was going on at the time I didn't even know what expressive arts was I didn't even know it existed mm -hmm. and as time went on and I um, I started you know more more people would come to my workshops and this thing happened started happening over and over and over again and I was like what is going on here so somehow I came across the term expressive arts and I was like started reading on it uh, reading up on it learning more about it and I and I realized that that I had been doing something again by accident that other people are, are actually doing you know the writing books about it and doing research on it so it was actually a real thing that I didn't even know was there and so um, so that's kind of how it how it got started and, and how it grew was just being able to provide a space and an environment that people felt safe um, and they were able to work through some issues. So it's 
been really wonderful. Okay. So I think you, you focus more on collage more than any other uh, types of art. Can you explain why? What, which, what resonates with collage for you? So, uh, so collage for me, I, I always was drawing when I was a kid, you know, pencils and doing collages, <laughs> cutting things out of magazines and putting them on a piece of paper and, and stuff like that. So I've always been kind of associated or connected with collage. And then when I got older, I took some art classes and I realized I really could not draw, I could not paint, it just it never came out right. So fast forward, uh, my kids were little about 10 years ago, I started, I decided I wanted to learn how to make paper in my backyard. I made a whole big stack of paper, didn't know what to do with it. I found a collage workshop, went to the class, learned how to apply the paper to a canvas, to vases, to whatever, do decoupage. And um, that's, uh, when, when I went through that process, I realized for me, I was like, oh my God, this is, I can do beautiful artwork with paper because the paper already has the color on it. And I don't know if I'm show an example. Okay. The paper already has the color on it. It already has a texture. So half of the work is done for me. The things that I don't know how to figure out about the color and the, all that, it's already done. So all I have to do is manipulate the paper in a way um, that makes it a piece of art. And it just took away some of the pressure of having something in your hand and, and drawing with it. I just tear or cut and glue. And I'll tell you, it just comes out. I don't even have to think about it. So it's very non-threatening and easy medium to use. And you've, you know, I have people come in my studio that have never done any artwork before, and especially men for some reason. I'll have men come in and, and they're kind of there with their wives. They'll drag them in there, you know, and they're kind of like, what am I doing here? And they'll start, I was like, just go, go to the paper, the paper drawer and find your favorite color. Just grab a handful of papers that you like. Don't think about it. Just grab them. Bring them to your table. And then I'm like, just start tearing and cutting them and gluing them on. And five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes go by, and they're totally engrossed in what they're doing. Um, and at the end of the day, they have a finished piece of artwork and, you know, it might not be anything wonderful, but they made it and they finished it and they always feel so good about it. And the experience itself, you know, not necessarily the finished product, the experience itself of doing it seems to really bring something out in people. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so you were talking about people who maybe don't, don't have any background in art or maybe feel like they can't draw or, or maybe inept in some way. And I'm wondering uh, if you can, Let's talk a little bit more about, you know, um, how can people get through that to maybe come see you or come, come work on this? Okay, so, um, well, my, I have a website, lauriecrine.com, uh, and that, uh, my website has information about workshops that I have and other mm -hmm. things. Um, so they just come to the studio and during my, my workshop so they can schedule a private session or whatever they want. It's all different ways, and it's just very non-threatening. And um, the beauty of it is, or part of the, part of the um, experience or part of the... A draw for people is because I have group classes, right? This is not a one-on-one -on -one experience. It can be if people want that, but most of the time it's a group experience. And that just the fact of being in a group with other people creating uh, adds another element of ease and community and connection with other people who are also tearing and cutting paper, and they share, you know, stories about themselves and and they share um, ideas about their artwork. So it becomes this really nice little uh, group activity. Mm -hmm. And then um, because they, people have bonded uh, during this time that they're creating together, they, they often continue the relationships outside of the class. So it's become a really nice little network for people in a support group in a way. Okay, so it becomes more than just, I'm just gonna sit in a room by myself or with you and do an art project. It's, it's a group experience where, where we're really you know, connecting with each other and having a great time together and, yes. and sharing a deep memory. Absolutely, yeah. yes, and, uh, and it, it just enhances the experience. I have lots of groups who come in. I have a like, ladies night out, so the women will come because they don't want to go to a bar. You know, what are you going to do? So they come to the studio together and they work on projects. They can work on their own projects. They can work on a project that I give them. There's really uh, no limit. I don't have a lot of restrictions on what you do when you come to the studio. A lot of times it is just sort of an open studio environment. Um, if you want to work on something specific, I'll show you how. If you want to do your own thing, that's great. Um, I have families that come together. We do. Uh, I do teenagers that come, and teenagers are the, the best group to come and do this because they have so much to express and so much to get out. And so many times they just don't know what to do with that emotion or those hormones or whatever, and they don't want to talk to their parents. They don't even know what to say or what's going on. But they can do artwork, and that artwork is a way for them to get it out, get it out of their heads and onto a canvas or whatever. 
and um, it's just a po really powerful experience for teenagers. So I work, um, I have a lot of uh, teen groups coming in the summer uh, and doing like a teen art camp environment. So uh, we do a lot of collage during that. Great. Now, can you talk a little bit about some of the pieces you've brought? Maybe uh, explain some of, the, some of these? Oh, sure. Um, uh, these are three masks that I brought. So I'll hold up this one we kind of already looked at, the yellow one. And we've got a, a red one as well. And then I'll show this one and then I'll talk about them. Okay. And this one is, uh, this one was done with magazines. So I sliced, I, I cut slices of magazines and then I adhered it onto the canvas and the mask and then I sanded it a little bit to make it a little rough so it wasn't so shiny. Well, how are the masks made? How do you do that? So the masks I buy pre-made oh, okay. at the craft store. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the mask, it's about decorating the mask. I see. So that's really what, oops, that's what the focus is. Um, so uh, the reason I brought the masks was for me, I did a series of about 25 masks a couple of years ago uh, for a show. And during that process, it was transformational for me. I, I realized that um, the ma masks are very popular in my classes. A lot of people like to do them because they're, um, we see ourselves in the masks, right? Mm -hmm. So we tend to decorate the mask depending on, like, we make it, um, it's just that we have a deep connection to the mm -hmm. mask. It's like a reflection of ourselves. It's exactly, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. um, and also I realized like the mask is coming out of the canvas, it's three-dimensional, but it's not, um, it, the paper's holding it back. So sometimes we hold ourselves back, we're trying to get out into the world, we're trying to show who we are as people, but the, but the paper like, is holding us back, so there's always something that might be holding us back. And to discover what that is so that we can bring our full selves to, our, to the world is one of the important things and one of the important elements of doing this work. Um, so when I was doing it, it just, it was, I, it was a transformational process for me, so that's why I really like to encourage people to do at least one mask art project when they come in. Okay. Yeah. And is there anything, we have a couple minutes left, and I just want to know, is there anything you would really like people to know either about you or about art, anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, I would just like, I would like to encourage people to give it a try because until you actually try it, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people are nervous and afraid and just come in. I mean, it's just paper. It's just paper and glue and a paintbrush. And it's just it's non-threatening and it's easy. And, and being together with other people doing it, we encourage each other. And it's a very informal, encouraging environment. So I hope that people will give it a try. And, um, and again, they can find the information on my website about, you know, my location and, and all that. Okay. Yeah. Can you say your website again one yeah, more it's time? Yeah, it's com. And crying, spell crying? K R E I N. K R E I N. Yes, and um, I'll be uh, located in Campbell um, starting in March. So. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for being here, Lori. Really appreciate you uh, being on the show. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Natural Healers Network TV show. Up next is Magda Robleska. She's a marriage and family therapist in Los Gatos, and I'd like to welcome Magda. Thank you. Nice being here. Yes, thanks for being here, Magda. Really appreciate it. I have to say it's a challenging thing for me because as a therapist, I'm better asking other people's questions than talking about myself. Okay, well, I'm delighted you're here. I'm very interested to hear about you, your work, and the people you help, and so forth. So um, just start by telling a little bit about yourself. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, mm -hmm. maybe where you're from. Yeah, well, I uh, was born and I grew up in Poland, and that's where I went to school. I, I was 17. Well, I remember I was 17 when I decided I'm going to be a psychologist. I don't know why. I read something about Freud, or it sounded interesting. And... Uh, and I did go study psychology. I graduated in the 80s. And um, in the meantime, I traveled a little bit. And then I emigrated from Poland in the 80s. Uh, I emigrated to Canada. And I worked as a therapist in this nice government clinic dealing with uh, people that had addiction issues. And pretty uh, soon after I started, I started specializing in helping women that already quit whatever they were doing and were looking at underlying issues of what got them in the, <clears throat> in the uh, addiction. Uh, and usually it showed up that there was some kind of trauma there. And most of the time 
sexual nature of trauma, molestation, rape, domestic violence. And I uh, somehow started specializing in that, that field. I worked there six years and then I um, just through life, how it happens, I ended up in California. Uh, as my second emigration and uh, quite a culture shock. <laughs> And uh, um, I had to go back to school because my degree from Poland wasn't accepted here. So I had to go through all the process of uh, going to graduate school, doing internship, you know, $3,000 internship. And I, um, again, I kind of always, not that I picked that, but uh, somehow I always ended up working with women in trauma. I worked at the jail. I worked at the um, agency that dealt with domestic violence. So somehow that became, uh, you know, obviously I was interested in it, but somehow it became just my area of, of work. And uh, I've had uh, my private practice in Los Gatos for eight years now, and I love doing that. I work with all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. What do you love about it? What, what is it that, that um you know, gets you to go to work every day and, and, and you, you're passionate about. Tell us mm -hmm. about that. Well, I love when people are courageous enough to look at themselves. That's one thing. And, and you know, usually people are in pain when they look for therapy. There is, you know, nobody does it just for fun. But uh, a lot of people stay in pain and not look at themselves. And I really love when people are, and, and when they are, um, um, I'm, I'm not sure how to say this, but they, uh, I feel privileged when people open up to me and feel like I can actually uh, help them, listen to them. Um, yeah, I, I felt that way too. It's, a, it's almost mm -hmm. like an honor to be, yeah. to be with them and to be sharing this experience with them. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed that's very interesting about being a therapist is that uh, we, as therapists, will sometimes have deeper and more meaningful conversations with people than they do with their own family. <laughs> That's true. Right? Because a lot of times they're afraid to open up or afraid to share things with people in their personal lives, and we're the person that they're actually able yeah. to do that with. Yeah. And that's a pretty amazing thing. Mm -hmm. So then who, who are the people that would come see you primarily? Well, I work with um, a lot of couples, and uh, sometimes couples work end up be becoming individual work because one person has some issues from the past that they need to address in order for the relationship to get better. And, uh, <clears throat> and of course, I work with individuals. I have a narrow area of interest and expertise. I work with women that had uh, what I uh, refer to as reproductive crisis, which means women that lost pregnancies through miscarriage or abortion or um, lost pregnancies later in term through stillbirth or lost an infant. Um, it's a, it, I find that that's a very unrecognized pain. Somehow society feels that women are equipped psychologically to deal with this kind of loss. Mm -hmm. and, and to some degree it's true, but I think women are never meant to be alone dealing with this. Well, there were always groups that, of women helping other women. And uh, I think sometimes these women right now feel isolated because it's like, oh, you're gonna get pregnant again, don't worry about it, you're young. And there is very deep pain, so I like to help women in that situation. Okay. Um, yeah, the other thing I really would like to talk about is that I uh, was trained in technique called eye movement desensitization reprocessing, EMDR. And that really helps uh, recover people from trauma. So that's a technique that was developed about over 20 years ago. And it's used uh, with people that are exposed to trauma, like first responders, even uh, veterans of wars. But it can help with uh, sort of this, we call it small t trauma, dark everyday traumatic uh, events. Um, and it really speeds the recovery up um, and makes it more effective and faster. So when you say, what do you mean by everyday trauma or trauma, what, what is that? Traumas like, um, let's say, a, 
a fight with your husband or uh, uh, you, sometimes people work on events from the childhood that doesn't have to be something major like molestation or loss of a parent. It can be just um, um, kids were picking at, at you at the playground and uh, you never really f recovered from that as you know since childhood you feel like you know there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And it really is worth going back to this experience from childhood and um, looking at it through a different lens so it doesn't affect how you feel about yourself later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I've found is that a lot of times those early experiences do affect us later on, but we just don't realize it. Yeah. And a lot of times mm -hmm. people come in and they don't realize that they're still they're still kind of holding on to things from the past, right? So how right. Do, how does EMDR actually help people move through that? Uh, the technique is uh, simple in the sense that uh, it's based on the idea that um, applying a stimulus that crosses the midline of your body. Uh, stimulates both hemispheres so the brain deals with whatever material it deals with in a faster and more effective way. That's just simple explanation but what you see when you use it with people is that uh, it's based on a natural tendency for our psyche to heal itself. What I love about EMDR is that uh, it's a technique that allows me to really step back and I'm not finding a solution for my client. They actually kind of go back into the memory and with the help of bilateral stimulation, they, they find their own way to healing and to resolution of these memories. And you can see it in the, in the session and it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, I, I love it because it's not something that I do to the client. I just, I just kind of facilitate their searching for their solution. Is there anything that um, it might not work for less? I mean, could it, could it be any, any kind of traumatic experience in childhood or early on in life that I would come to see you for that? Um, mm -hmm. so. Well, it works the most spectacularly with one, uh, one time traumatic event. Like if you had a, a car accident and you really developed a, a trepidation about driving, uh, that EMDR can clear that within two, three sessions. Um, with uh, w what it, what it, where it gets more complicated if there was a trauma that repeated uh, itself over and over again, like childhood sexual abuse, for example, or domestic violence when a woman was being beaten over and over again. And you can definitely recover from that, and mm -hmm. EMDR can help, but it's not going to be one session. Right. It's, it's not, it's not so clear-cut. Yeah. It takes a little bit more, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about uh, your practice. You're in Los Gatos? Yes, I'm in Los Gatos. Um, I have a nice little office off Highway 17, very easy access. Um, uh, You've been I'm doing not sure what else to Well, do. how long have you been doing it? Um, uh, well, in this country. <laughs> oh, in this country. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I, had, um, I have my private practice since 2005. But of course, as you know, we, you know, before that I worked as an intern in many places. So I, I've been pretty much doing therapy for over 20 years with like little breaks when I was immigrated from one country to the next. Mm -hmm. Uh, I started way back in Poland being trained as a Gestalt therapist, but my way, you know, my, my life took me a kind of roundabout way to being here and doing EMDR. Do you, do, do you use any other techniques or modalities other than EMDR? Like, do you still use Gestalt techniques or, or anything else? Actually, EMDR lends itself very well to some other styles like process therapy. Gestalt therapy that are very close. So just attending to the client process, but kind of nudging the process along with the help of bilateral stimulation. So yeah, I, it's not the only thing I do. I, I do all kinds of other things. Some people are not open to trying it, and then I never push that. It's not the only thing I can use. Um, okay.
So we're almost out of time, but do you have a website that people can uh, look yes. you up and get a hold of you? Can you let people know what that is? Yes, it's uh, losgatoscounselingservices.com. Okay, losgatoscounselingservices.com. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Well, Magda, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate thank it. Thanks. And that's for it for our show today for the, for the Natural Healers Network TV. We hope you'll tune in next time. Bye.